Daniel 11, part 1. In the first year of Darius the Mede, I arose to be an encouragement and a protection for him. Pause. So this is still the man in linen from chapter 10, referring to assisting Michael the angel. Verse 2. And now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings are going to arise in Persia. Then a fourth will gain far more riches than all of them. As soon as he becomes strong through his riches, he will arouse the whole empire against the realm of Greece. And a mighty king will arise, and he will rule with great authority and do as he pleases. But as soon as he has arisen, his kingdom will be broken up and parceled out toward the four points of the compass, though not to his own descendants, nor according to his authority which he wielded, for his sovereignty will be uprooted and given to others besides them. Pause. The three Persian kings following Cyrus were Cambys, Pseudo-Samaritus, and Darius Histopis. <laughs> the fourth um, is Xerxes I, also referred to as Ahasuerus in the book of Esther. Each of these empires attempted to wipe out the people of God at some point in time. Then the king of the south will grow strong, along with one of his princes who will gain ascendancy over him and obtain dominion. His domain will be great dominion indeed. After some years, they will form an alliance, and the daughter of the king of the south will come to the king of the north to carry out a peaceful arrangement. But she will not retain her position of power, nor will he remain with his power, but she will be given up along with those who brought her in and the one who sired her as well as he who supported her in those times. But one of the descendants of her line will arise in his place, and he will come against their army and enter the fortress of the king of the north, and he will deal with them and display great strength. We'll explain in a moment. Also their gods, lowercase g, with their metal images and their precious vessels of silver and gold, he will take into captivity to Egypt and he on his part will refrain from attacking the king of the north for some years. Then the latter will enter the realm of the king of the south, but will return to his own land. Pause and let's discuss. The king of the south represents Ptolemy I of Egypt. Soon after the division of Alexander's empire, Ptolemy took charge. He had a prince named Seleucus, who rose to power and took dominion over Syria, and became more powerful than his former Egyptian ruler. The Seleucids are identified with the kings of the north, and the Ptolemies were the kings of the south. South and north are in relation to Palestine. The Seleucids and the Ptolemies fought for some 130 years. The stronger of the two always held dominion over the Holy Land. Verses 5 through 20 today cover a span of nearly 200 years of war. Bernice, the daughter of Egypt's Ptolemy, married Syria's king Antiochus II. This was in hopes of the political advantage it would produce. Antiochus divorced his wife to marry Bernice. Later, that divorced wife murdered Bernice, her baby son, and Antiochus by poisoning them. Thus she brought her own son, Seleucus Callinicus, to the throne. Callinicus attacked Egypt in 240 BC, but retreated, being badly beaten. Ptolemy III, who was the brother of Bernice, avenged the murder of his sister. His sons will mobilize and assemble a multitude of great forces, and one of them will keep on coming and overflow and pass through, that he may again wage war up to his very fortress. The king of the south, Ptolemy, will be enraged and go forth and fight with the king of the north, Seleucus. Then the latter will raise a great multitude, but that multitude will be given into the hand of the former. When the multitude is carried away, his heart will be lifted up, and he will cause tens of thousands to fall, yet he will not prevail. For the king of the north will again raise a greater multitude than the former, and after an interval of some years, he will press on with a great army and much equipment. Now in those times, many will rise up against the king of the south. The violent ones among your people will also lift themselves up in order to fulfill the vision, 
but they will fall down. Then the king of the north will come, cast up a siege ramp and capture a well-fortified city. And the forces of the south will not stand their ground, not even their choicest troops. For there will be no strength to make a stand. But he who comes against him will do as he pleases, and no one will be able to withstand him. He will also stay for a time in the beautiful land with destruction in his hand. Pause. Seleucus III and Antiochus III were the two sons of Seleucus II and were both successful generals. The messenger told Daniel that the king of the south would attack and meet a great multitude of soldiers from the king of the north. The king of the north would lose in battle and his multitude would be defeated. This was fulfilled when Antiochus III was defeated at the Battle of Raphia. Because of that loss, he was forced to give back dominion over the Holy Land to Ptolemy IV. Thirteen years later, Antiochus returned with a great army, and in a series of strikes against Egypt, brought Palestine into his control as far south as Gaza. Excuse me. He will set his face to come with the power of his whole kingdom, bringing with him a proposal of peace, which he will put into effect. He will also give him the daughter of women to ruin it, but she will not take a stand for him or be on his side. Then he will turn his face to the coastlands and capture many. But a commander will put a stop to his scorn against him. Moreover, he will repay him for his scorn. So he will turn his face toward the fortresses of his own land, but he will stumble and fall and be found no more. Pause. Antiochus III gave his daughter Cleopatra to Ptolemy V of Egypt. He did this hoping to gain permanent influence and eventually control in Egypt. To the great disappointment of Antiochus III, the plan did not succeed because Cleopatra wasn't faithful to her Egyptian husband. This was not the famous Cleopatra from ancient history, but was the ancestor of the more famous Cleopatra. Antiochus III then turned his attention towards the areas of Asia Minor and Greece, but a Roman general, Lucius Cornelius Scipio, defeated Antiochus in Greece. Antiochus planned to humiliate Greece, but was humiliated instead. He returned to his former regions, having lost all that he gained and died shortly after. Needing money badly for his treasury, he resorted to pillaging a Babylonian temple and was killed by enraged local citizens. Then in his place, one will arise who will send an oppressor through the jewel of his kingdom. Yet within a few days, he will be shattered, though not in anger nor in battle. In his place, a despicable person will arise on whom the honor of kingship has not been conferred, but he will come in a time of tranquility and seize the kingdom by intrigue. The overflowing forces will be flooded away before him and shattered, and also the prince of the covenant. After an alliance is made with him, he will practice deception, and he will go up and gain power with a small force of people. In a time of tranquility, he will enter the richest parts of the realm, and he will accomplish what his fathers never did nor his ancestors. He will distribute plunder, booty, and possessions among them, and he will devise his schemes against strongholds, but only for a time. Pause. Seleucus IV set out to tax his subjects heavily, but died after being poisoned. Seleucid, the most cruel king of the north, came to the throne when his brother Seleucus was murdered. Verse 25. He will stir up his strength and courage against the king of the south with a large army. So the king of the south will mobilize an extremely large and mighty army for war, but he will not stand, for his schemes will be devised against him. Those who eat his choice food will destroy him, and his army will overflow, but many will fall down slain. As for both kings, their hearts will be intent on evil, and they will speak lies to each other at the same table, but it will not succeed, for the end is still to come at the appointed time. Then he will return to his land with much plunder, but his heart will be set against the Holy Covenant, and he will take action and then return to his own land. Pause. The defeat of Antiochus Epiphanes at his second campaign against Egypt was important because Egypt beat Antiochus with the help of Rome. At the end of it all, 
Antiochus Epiphanes and his kingdom were under the dominion of Rome. It's important to note as we pause the chapter for the day that this chapter contains some of the most specifically fulfilled prophecies in the Bible, predicting history over 375 years and with incredible accuracy. Mind-blowing stuff. Let's close out in prayer. Dear Lord, getting to learn prophecy from your word is just a tremendous privilege that we love to hear. It never ceases to amaze us how your word proves true and has withstood the test of time, even under severe attacks and threat of getting rid of it. I appreciate all my brothers and sisters who tune in to share and learning with me. It does mean a lot. Please continue to bless all of us by leading and guiding us in your word. And please make sure I do an accurate job of handling it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you being here. I'm enjoying this big time. This is probably one of my favorite books in the Bible, hands down. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I hope, uh, hope to see you soon. Take care.